Hi guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective. Today I'm doing another steel talk and today the subject is Nitro V. So for a disclaimer, I personally don't have experience with Nitro V. So a lot of what I'm going to speak to is experiences that I actually have with AEBL in this steel. 14C28N, which I don't currently have anymore, and uh, some notes from LC200N. Um, as I've cited down here, a lot of what I've got, a lot of the research I did came from uh, Laren Thomas at KnifeSteelNerds.com. Also, some uh, YouTube channels I'd like to shout out, like Cedric and Ada, as well as uh, Outpost76. Uh, both those channels do a lot of testing on steels, so I looked at what they had to back up the theories that I had myself in uh, drawing comparisons as well as what I found from Laren. So let's get into it. Uh, the story of Nitro V really starts with AEBL, and without getting too deep into it, so this is a kitchen knife in AEBL made by Zvilling J. Hankels in their Miyabi factory in Japan. It's hardened to 61 HRC. This is my main experience with ABL. But basically, ABL was designed and invented to be a stainless steel that had a very fine grain structure uh, that was easily blankable, meaning it could be stamped and also high toughness. And that main application for that was actually in razor blades to start out fine grain structure, allowed it to get very, very sharp. Um, this lower carbon allowed it to be blankable because you're making a lot of razor blades and stainless because people don't always take care of great care of the razor blades. I know I sure don't, I just leave them in the shower. So ABL, and basically what they did is the more stuff you have in the steel, the less tough it's going to be overall. So they tried to minimize the amount of stuff in AEBL. So that's why you don't see um, tungsten in here, molybdenum, really a whole lot of anything. And to avoid the formation of large chromium carbides, they reduced the amount of chromium to basically the minimum amount to be stainless and they reduced the amount of carbon in there so you didn't have an overly large amount of carbon attaching to the chromium forming the large chromium carbides. So that's where the L in AEBL comes from. It means low carbon compared to the AEB and AEBH, which I don't think you can buy anymore. Um, so that's the concept behind AEBL. And we'll get into the specifics of the toughness and, what, and all that good jazz later. So AEBL comes out. Uh, mainly for razor blades. It ends up getting used in uh, pocket knives and they, there is mixed results with AEBL because uh, essentially if you under harden AEBL, there's just not enough carbide in there for it to perform. So if you have soft AEBL, it's basically worthless. And that's not worthless, but it's not anything special uh, really that most people will notice is if you have soft AEBL. So like most kitchen knives that are made in AEBL are the equivalents. There's a bunch of analogs, 13C26. I forget what the German one is, you know, like 1.4 some odd. Uh, it's another one, FC61, a lot of analogs. But kitchen knives are in and around the 61 range and it, they can definitely go harder. Um, but if you're, in the you know 57 to 59 range, it's just not going to be that great of a performing knife. So, anyways, company started using ABL on some knives. Its biggest detractor, though, is ABL is just barely stainless, and they they wanted a steel that had that fine grain structure still and easily blankable, but with a little bit more stainlessness. Enter 14C28N. That's a very common steel nowadays. And basically, the way they added some stainlessness to it is they 
added a little dose of chromium, and here you're talking about one of the nitrogen steels. This is a low nitrogen steel with relative to something like two, LC200N um, with a 0.11%. And basically what happens, you can see there's a reduction in carbon because nitrogen can take the place of carbon and getting it hard and forming carbides. But in this case, I can't fully explain it, but essentially the effect of uh, chromium being bound up with nitrogen versus carbon allows it to be more stainless and also tougher than if a chromium carbide versus a chromium nitride. So you got more stainlessness out of 14C28N while still having it be very fine grain structure and very tough. And mind you, none of these are CPM steels. Um, so now we had a, a fine grain that's very tough, but not very stainless. Now we've got fine grain, very tough and stainless. And that's where the story comes over to Nitro V. Is, uh, it's essentially a combo of ABL 14C28N with a little bit of vanadium added. So with this amount of vanadium in here, you are not forming vanadium carbides. There's just not enough to do it. What you do get with vanadium adds like this, and they're very common in low alloy steels, is you get grain refinement. And basically what happens is this vanadium, when you're austenizing the, the steel, is the vanadium doesn't melt into a liquid quite all the way when you austenize. So you have uh, an initiation site for new grain growth so that when you grow new grains, you can grow them smaller instead of if you fully dissolve everything and they grow back, you'll just explode your, uh, your grain size. So it helps with grain refinement. And then it's got that nitrogen add to do the exact same purpose of LC or a 14C28N to help in that hardening ability and stainlessness and manganese more so for machining. Um, I think initially they actually thought that this was supposed to aid in uh, stainlessness also way back in the day, but it, I don't think it does at all in terms of our current knowledge. And back to the lower chromium content. I don't know why they went to the lower chromium content. To me, it looks like they were shooting for higher hardness than uh, these two because you've got the same amount of carbon, but you've got the add of nitrogen. So Nitro V, for all practical purposes, gets about the same hardness as ABL and 14C28N does. And uh, with all of that, what does this come down to? What is, where does Nitro V rank? And we'll get more into this later compared to these two. Is basically, you get a steel that's still tough, but more stainless than ABL and generally harder than 14C28N. So you see the progression. So from here to here, you gain stainlessness, and from here to here, you gain hardness. Now that's not to say that 14C28N or AABL can't be as hard as Nitro V. That's not true. It's just the general trend I, I, I'm seeing with blades. And that's why I've kind of marked these hardnesses down here. You don't see AABL in a lot of folders, really, but in kitchen knives, it's usually around 61. Um, but in terms of folders of 14C28N, it's kind of a crapshoot. You don't know if you're going to get a blade that's 56 HRC or 59 HRC. And like I was talking about with AABL, is hardness is pretty much everything to this class of steel. Is You can get very good fine edge hair shaving edge retention out of these steels at decent hardness that'll compete with some steels like your S30Vs and things like that. But when it comes to abrasive cutting and working edge, these are gonna fall flat on their face. So keep that in mind. So let's kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about with those things, kind of the back up here. Um, so the carbide volume, and all of these is 6% chromium carbide. Um, according to uh, Laren Thomas, uh, running these on a computer, not 
trying to remember if it's no uh, nitride, chromium nitrides are formed or very little. None of them have vanadium carbides, so that's not a contributing factor here. And here is the big kicker for why these steels are interesting, is that fine grain structure means they sharpen amazing, like this one does, and they are incredibly tough. So you've got nitro V in an uh, uh, unnotched Sharpie, Sharpie impact test. This is from Laren Thomas at 61 HRC. Nitro V, 22 foot pounds. ABL, 32 foot pounds. 14 C, 28 N, 28 foot pounds. Now Laren notes and uh, everything here based off the composition, grain size. And oh yeah, these have all pretty much equivalently fine grains if you look at them in a micrograph. Um, based off all of this, these should all be relatively the same. And he notes that this seems too low. So my guess is 60 or 22 foot pounds is too low. But what I've got a note here is just to put this in perspective, a lot of people think CPM S35 VN is a, is a tough steel. Well, AEBL is three times tougher. It's in a completely different class. This ABL is tougher than a lot of, like, like crew wear. It's as tough as crew wear at that hardness. It is so tough. It, it's actually the toughest stainless steel that you can put in a blade, ABL. So when you're talking about a, ones that are on that lineage of extremely tough stainless steels, now you can get... Uh, more stainlessness while maintaining that high, high toughness. So that's where the beauty of Nitro V, 14C, 28N, and ABL come from. Oh yeah, I put in a note about LC200N. It's in the same class of toughness, so I couldn't find a number. It has very fine carbides. It is almost stain proof versus stain less, uh, but less carbide volume. And I just wanted to take a note about this is in testing, I get the same fine edge uh, holding out of LC200N in this blade as I do in uh, uh, S30V from Benchmade when I test it, the numbers. But if I do, you know, two cuts on cardboard with this, then two cuts with S30V, and I go along and I test the edge and feel it as I go, the LC200N falls behind. It, it doesn't feel the same because as it loses that hair shaving edge, it's dulling, whereas S30V is developing the working edge. So it, it breaks down a lot better, S30V does, compared to LC200N. And I think in an everyday carry scenario, that's what you'll find with steels like this. So to wrap it all up, I think that Nitro V, AEBL, 14C, 28N are all fantastic knife steels. What they bring to the plate is that they're stainless and extremely tough and have good edge stability, meaning that you're not going to chip it, but you're also not going to roll it. And that's what they bring to the table. The trade-off is that they only will perform well if they're hardened properly, talking probably 59 to 61 for uh, an EDC blade, is they're only gonna perform if they're hardened properly and they're just not gonna have that working edge uh, that, that uh, S30V and uh, vanadium carbide steels are gonna have. Um, yeah, I uh, just will add with a note from Gerald uh, at Outpost 76 and Cedric and Ada, the fine edge that they see out of Nitro V is in line with uh, your average equivalent hardness, you know, M390, S30, S30V, because fine edge holding is mostly based on hardness. Um, so yeah, uh, the last note I would make I think I already mentioned it, but these HRCs can be done a lot higher, up to 63, 64. And to me, high HRC makes sense on these steels because they're so tough. This is the, these are the steels you want to push. These are the toughest stainless steels you can get.
you want to push the hardness on these babies. So yeah, it's stainless, it's tough, it's great to sharpen, awesome fine grain structure. At the right hardness, holds a sick fine edge. It just doesn't have the working edge. But everywhere else, it is A-OK. -okay. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Oh, I was just gonna mention, because it has no vanadium carbide, you can sharpen it easily on just a normal Japanese whetstone. This is actually a splash and go ceramic from Nano Hone, but even like your king, king stones and whatnot will be good on it. So that's all I've got. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.